love Israel. I love Israel. It's an honor to be back with so many great friends and incredible supporters and the true American patriots at the Republican Jewish Coalition. Great honor. I want to thank you, Chairman, a friend of mine, a great gentleman who actually won that election, by the way, Norm Coleman. He won the election. People forget he won that election. Your CEO, who does a fantastic job, Matt Brooks. Thank you, Matt, very much. Thank you. A very good friend of mine, and her husband was another great friend of mine, fantastic man, fantastic woman, Miriam Adelson. Miriam, thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. They like you. They like her. So do we. We all like her. I do like I like her a lot. Congressman Michael Waltz. Michael, where are you? What? He's right here. I know he's here because I saw him come right in. And also Julia Neshwat. Julia, thank you very much for being here. A tremendous person and friend of mine, Byron Donalds. You know Byron? Where is he? He's great. He's a and there he is. What a, what a star. He's great. Big, big future. Another big future, Max Miller. Fantastic congressman. Congressman Miller. He was with me in the White House for four years. He was fantastic. Former congressman and a friend of mine who's been incredible, Billy Long. You know Billy? And his wife, Barbara, here, wherever you may be, Billy. Wherever you may be. He's the greatest auctioneer. He, he can do things with his tongue. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. RNC chairwoman who's done a fantastic job and a real good friend. She's fought alongside of us for a long time. Rana McDaniel. Rana, thank you. Thank you, Rana. A man who gets, he gets the weekend ratings. He's so good. They put him on Saturday night now. He's on Sunday. He's on Saturday. I want to, and if you did Friday and Thursday and Wednesday, I'd be happy to. But he has done unbelievably highest rated show in the weekends and all of television. And, you know, he started off as a great lawyer. That's how it all started. His wife is a great lawyer, Julie. And they're both here, Mark Levin and Julie. Where are they? Where are they? Great. Two great people. And the mother-in-law is better than both of them. Where is the mother-in-law? There she is. She's better than both of them. Good genes. Thank you very much for being here. Rick Harrison, star of Pawn Stars. He's 21 years. That means he's got something. Where's Rick? What a job. I know all about that stuff with The Apprentice. To stay on 21 years, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you, Rick, for being here. Always here. We really appreciate it. And a man who just became a great Republican. He's going to be a star of the party. In fact, uh, Byron told me that. He said he's going to be a star. He said, I know that. Randy Fine. Randy? Randy, thank you. And loves Israel. Three weeks ago, our world was shattered by an attack on Israel to every Israeli and every American touched by these barbaric activities. We love you. You have to understand that. We love you and we're with you and we grieve with you. We share your anger and we stand with you 100 percent. Okay? 100. 110. 110 percent. Let there be no doubt the killers responsible for this Horrible massacre will burn forever in the eternal pit of hell. They're going to burn forever. Long time. On that terrible Saturday morning, the world saw once again that the conflict between Israel and Hamas is not a conflict between two equal sides. This is a fight between civilization and savagery, between decency and depravity, and between good and evil. There is no comparison between a group that worships death and a group that cherishes life and cherishes our nation. Every single life that is lost in this conflict is on the shoulders of Hamas. Hamas alone. It's Hamas alone. And I think you have to really add in the word Iran. Iran. People don't want to talk about it. There can be no sympathy, no excuses, and no escape from these monsters, and we will, uh, we will do what has to be done. And yet Joe Biden's feeble first act, one of the worst messages I've ever seen sent out to bad people, after more than 1,400 innocents, including over 40 Americans, were murdered or kidnapped, 
And uh, think of this, we immediately announced that we're giving Hamas $100 million. We're going to give it to them into Gaza, but they take it 100% of it. They don't take 90%, they take 100%. Mark knows that better than anybody. They take 100% and we give them money hand over fist, and we've been doing that for many years. And then a speech was made declaring that if you support Israel, you must give billions of dollars for open borders in Ukraine. In other words, they want to wield it all together. And you don't wield it together. They have to all stand on their own. Unlike Biden, he's terrible. Worst president in our history by <laughs> worst president. He's the worst president. He's the most incompetent president. When I'm back in the White House, the United States will stand with Israel all the way, 100 percent, without hesitation, without qualification, and without any apology. We're not going to be apologizing. We won't be apologizing. We're not going to be apologizing. We will fully support the Israelis in their mission to ensure that Hamas is decimated and these atrocities will be avenged. They will be avenged. In many ways, they'll be avenged. I think even beyond what you're thinking about. Joe Biden's weakness caused the attack on Israel. Pure weakness and incompetence. Everywhere he goes, Biden's weakness provokes war and death because, as history shows, evil only respects one thing, unyielding strength. You've got to be strong. Otherwise, they're going to be taking over and they're going to be doing things that you wouldn't even believe. When I'm back in the White House, America's enemies will now once again, and they're going to know it, that if you try to kill our citizens, we will kill you. We will kill you. I told them all that. We had no problem. You know, we had no problem. Three years ago, we had no problem. For four years, nobody even — this is unthinkable. I mean, I just watch and see what's happening. It's unthinkable. This couldn't have happened. Mark, couldn't have happened. Although you maybe were more deeply involved than anybody, but I don't think you even believed a thing like this could have happened, Mark. If you spill a drop of American blood, we will spill a gallon of yours. We do not. And we're doing it because we want to start peace. We're not going to start wars, but the wars have to be finished oftentimes before the peace. And if you don't do the wars, the peace doesn't happen. And if you're not going to be tough and ruthless like they are, it's not going to happen. We have to stop it. We have to end it once and for all. Under my leadership, we will not squander our strength by trying to build democracies or in quicksand that, like we try to do. Let's take over a country and let's make it into a democracy. How does that work out? Not too good? Or turn Baghdad into Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Doesn't work out too well. But we will use American power to deter those who would harm our people. To every American who is terrified that Joe Biden's catastrophic weakness will bring our country to ruin, and it's closer than it's ever been. I believe it's closer than ever to ruin. I believe it's closer than ever to World War III. And I will stop World War III. You will not have World War III. I can tell you that. And I make this promise to you, as President, we will restore peace through strength on the Earth beyond on the Earth. Victor Orban said the other day, the only way that this world is going to be solved, he's a very strong man, as you know, from Hungary. And he's the boss. There's no doubt about it. He actually asked me for my endorsement, and I gave it to him. I said, what do you need it for? He says, because I like to win by a lot. And, and he did. But he said, uh, they asked him a question at an interview, and they said, what would you recommend to, to Biden? And he said that I recommend that he resign immediately and put Trump in his place, because during Trump, there were no problems. China respected us. Russia respected us. Everybody respected us. Under my presidency, our country was very, very feared and very, very respected. Feared is not a nice word, but we were feared. The greatest military in the world. You saw what we did. For four straight years, I kept America safe. I kept Israel safe, and I kept the world safe. The world was a safer place, a much safer place. Today, the world is — today, the world is blowing up all around, no matter where you look. If I were president, the attack on Israel would never, 
ever have happened. I think you believe that, right? I think you believe that. Ukraine would never have happened. Inflation would never have happened. The most embarrassing moment in our history, the inept withdrawal, the way they withdrew, not the fact that they were getting out. I had them all set to move. We we're going to move out with dignity and strength, and we were going to take our equipment, and we were going to take our Americans with us, and we weren't going to have 13 people killed. Great soldiers, great, beautiful, young soldiers. I got to know all of the parents. And we weren't going to have 38 people wounded so badly, their lives are shattered, just shattered. The legs, the arms, the face obliterated. We weren't going to have any of that. We we're going to walk out with power and strength and dignity, and we were going to get out. And we were going to keep Bagram, the Air Force Base, the big Air Force Base, because it was one hour away from where China makes its nuclear weapons, but they lost that too. And right now, you know who occupies it? China occupies it. And we would not have open borders where countries are emptying out their prisons, mental institutions, and sending record numbers of terrorists for which we will someday be paying a very big price unless you elect Donald J. Trump. I'm not going to pay a price. Before I came into office, the World Trade Center in New York City was obliterated. The Middle East was in flames. ISIS had a caliphate spanning 20,000 square miles. That's a big area. Europe was being massacred by jihadist lunatics. Syria was in a civil war. Libya was a horror show. Yemen was a nightmare. Our allies were alienated and just terrible. They couldn't even talk to us. They wouldn't want to talk to us. Iran was coasting toward a nuclear bomb, and it was flush with cash like they had never seen before. And they were funding Hezbollah and Hamas. They were funding them. They were funding Hamas. They were giving them so much money all of a sudden. But in a few short years after I got there, I reversed every single disaster Obama and Biden created. And it wasn't easy. But it was easier than I thought. We totally demolished 100% of the ISIS territorial caliphate. And I was told that couldn't be done. I was told that would take at least four to five years and we couldn't do it. We did it in four months. I just want to let you know we have a great military, great generals, the real generals, not the ones you see on television, the real ones. The ones that want to fight, the non-woke generals. We killed the founder and the leader of ISIS. You remember they were looking for him for years and years before I got there. Al-Baghdadi, we killed him. He was gone. We eliminated the world's top terrorists, the most brutal terrorists of them all. The Iranian butcher, Soleimani, we, we eliminated him. Uh, he's the father of the roadside bomb. Whenever you see a soldier or civilian or anybody without the legs, without the arms, He's the one, he caused 94% of it, they say. He was, uh, he loved those roadside bombs. That's what he loved. And uh, he's not with us any longer. Just as I promised, I withdrew from the horrendous Iran nuclear deal. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything with it. They didn't do anything with it. It was supposed to be, I thought it was my greatest gift to Israel. The problem is this administration did absolutely nothing. They just let them go and make, they would have never, ever, been even close. I mean, they are very close to having a nuclear weapon. Remember Kim Jong-un? We got along with him. Everything was good. If Hillary Clinton got in, you would have had a nuclear war. I got in, and everything was fine. But dealing with Iran is going to be a very big problem. And frankly, North Korea right now is a very big problem also. You see what's happening there. He's not liking this group of people. I imposed crippling oil sanctions on Iran and crushed their resources to a level that nobody ever thought possible. And the funding from terror, they had 70, million, 70 billion, think of this, in the bank. And when I left, they were broke. They were stone cold broke. China, don't buy. None of you buy. They were desperate to make a deal. We would have had a deal within one week after the election if the election weren't rigged. We would have had a deal one week after that election. And we did that through strength, not through weakness. But Crooked Joe surrendered my tough sanctions almost immediately, and Iran now has 
much more than $100 billion to finance terror all over the world, including the United States and certainly including Israel. As president, I withdrew from the anti-American, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic UN Human Rights Council. Withdrew. And while others talk about stopping funding for Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, I actually did it. I stopped. I said, wait a minute. You just said death to America, didn't you? You said death. Remember, they came into Washington to meet me. They went back. I thought it was a nice meeting, to be honest. They were very nice. And then they went back. I said, they couldn't have. That's not the same group I left. They went back and they said, death to America, death to Israel. So I said, really, we stopped immediately funding the 700 million. That moment, I said, stop funding them. And uh, we did, immediately. They leave and they say, death to America, and then we pay. And by the way, they were saying it for years, and people just kept paying them $742 million a year. It's a lot of money. After decades of broken promises by past leaders, I kept my promise, recognized Israel's eternal capital, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I actually got the building built, too. Got it built. They've been talking about that for a long time, Miriam. That's what you and that great man, that's what you wanted, right? And we got it built. You know, we got it built. And uh, it's supposed to cost $2 billion. We got it done for 500000 I don't want to sound, because it's probably nicer than the two. But I said, do we have land on set of buying that we're going to pay hundreds of millions of dollars for this crummy location, as we say in real estate, right? A lot of good real estate guys here. And I said, do we have a piece of land where we have maybe a building on it? We'll renovate it, fix it, and get it done. They called me back to the, sir, we have a great site, probably the best site in Jerusalem. I think it's the best site in Jerusalem. There was a building on it. And I said, make sure you use a lot of Jerusalem stone. A friend of mine has Jerusalem stone in New York City. That's all he talks about is Jerusalem stone. I said, do you have any Jerusalem stone there? We can buy it for the right price. They said, this is Jerusalem. The whole building is made out of Jerusalem stone. And it's a beautiful building. I got it opened in four months for 500,000. They said, we can do it, sir, for 400,000. It's the first time I've ever said this in my life. I said, 400,000, that sounds too cheap. Make it more expensive. But actually, because they said, you know, I was supposed to sign a, I was signing papers for $2 billion. This is nicer than the $2 billion version that probably never would have gotten built, by the way. You're open in four months, and it's been incredible. And remember, they said, oh, if you open, if you do that, it's going to be bloodshed all over the world. There was no bloodshed. There was no bloodshed. But now there's bloodshed for different reasons, and that's terrible. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Nobody even thought about that. For 72 years, people would fly into Israel and they'd talk and talk and talk about the Golan Heights, and I got it for them. We got them sovereignty over the Golan Heights. That was a big deal. We got it done in about 12 minutes. That's right. 72 years they talked about the Golan Heights. Every year, people would fly in and they'd talk about the Golan Heights. They'd have lunch, they'd have dinner, they'd go home, and they'd come back a year later and keep talking. I got it done in 12 minutes. That was a big one. The experts said our pro-Israel policies would produce terror and chaos, but I knew the opposite was true. That turned out to be right. We got the historic Abraham Accords and peace in the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East. In four countries, you should have had every one of them signed. Within three months after the election, I would have had every single one of them signed. And maybe, maybe, because they were really wanting to make a deal, maybe even Iran, if you can believe that. We would have had every country signed. You would have had real peace in the Middle East. And look at what you've got now. Nobody's ever seen anything like it so fast. I'm proud to be the best friend that Israel has ever had. Everybody says, are you, sir, the best friend that Israel's ever had? And with four more years, I will defend America, and I will defend Western civilization from the barbarians and savages and fascists that you see right now trying to do harm to our beautiful Israel. We're not going to let that happen. Instead of cuddling up to the killers in Iran, as Biden has done, I will once again sanction them until their ability to fund terror is absolutely gone. And I will unleash the most powerful 
economic weapon there is on Earth. Drill, baby drill. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? You know, we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other nation, more than Saudi Arabia, more than Russia, and we don't use it. We go to Venezuela to get their tar. And then we refine it in the only plant that can do that. And you know where it is? It's in Houston, Texas, okay? So when they, yeah, well, don't be so happy. Take a look at what they're doing to your air, you know, if you're a big believer in that, which you should be. I will totally demolish the deep state, and instead of targeting Trump supporters, our government will get back to fighting the terrorists where they should be, because that's our big problem. Just days ago, Customs and Border Patrol, who are incredible people, by the way, distributed a memo warning that Hamas and Hezbollah fighters and jihadists are infiltrating across our wide open border. They're all over the place. Nobody's ever seen anything like this. They're all over the place. On day one, I will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration. People are pouring into our country at levels never seen before for any country, not just here. Third world countries wouldn't let it happen. They'd fight them with sticks and stones if they had to. They're coming in by the millions and millions. I believe by the end of his term, you have more than 15 million people. That's bigger than New York State. And we have no idea who they are, where they come from. But we know they come from the prisons and the jails. We know they come from mental institutions and insane asylums. Sir, please don't say insane asylums. That's very, that's silence of the lamb stuff, right? That's Hannibal, that's Hannibal Lecter. Anybody ever hear of that nice gentleman? No, they're emptying out their insane asylums and their mental institutions into the United States, and they're just freely walking right across our border. What a, what a problem it is. How could anybody want to do that? How could anybody want to do that? They can't be stupid because you can't cheat that well in elections if you're stupid. But the only other alternative is they want to destroy our country. They want to destroy our country. Under Biden, we have not one, but two immigration disasters. We have one on the border, and we have one in the Biden State Department, which is admitting colossal amounts of jihadists into our communities and campuses and our refugee programs. That's why you see all of these big demonstrations in New York, in Chicago. Nobody can believe what's taking place. They're letting them in at levels that nobody's ever seen before. We cannot allow that to happen, and we don't want to be like Europe with jihads on every corner. That's what happens. I mean, we're going to have, we're going to be like Europe. You take a look at London, you take a look at Paris, you take a look at what's going on over there. We want to be the United States of America and we want to make our country great again. Right now, we don't have a great country. We have a laughing stock. As president, I will end once and for all the mass importation of anti Semitism into the United States. And just as I did before, we will keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. We're going to keep them out of our country. We were keeping them out. We were keeping them out. You remember the travel ban? On day one, I will restore our travel ban. We had a travel ban because we didn't want people coming into our country who really love the idea of blowing, blowing our country up. Let's blow up our streets and our shopping centers and our people. So I instituted what we call the Trump travel ban, and it was a, uh, an amazing success. It was suspended immediately upon his coming into the country. And I never talked about this for four years. I never mentioned it. We didn't have one incident in four years because we kept bad people the hell out of our country. We kept them out. We didn't have one, not one instance. I didn't want to say it during the four years because I didn't want to walk out of the speech and have something happen, right? I'll also be implementing strong ideological screenings for all immigrants coming in. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists, then we don't want you in our country, and you're not going to be getting into our country. I will cancel the student visas of Hamas and sympathizers on college campuses. The college campuses are being taken over. And all of the resident aliens who joined in the pro-jihadist protest this month, nobody's ever seen anything like it. Come 2025, 
We will find you and we will deport you. We will deport you. That's caused by some very bad troublemakers, those uh, events that you've been watching. In the past three weeks, crooked Joe Biden has turned a blind eye to the greatest outbreak of anti-Semitism in American history. You have the greatest — I call up friends of mine who happen to be Jewish. I say, are you watching what's going on? And they're actually frightened. And these are some pretty strong people. They're tough people. They're frightened. Their kids are afraid to go to school. And they never had that before. But in our colleges, media, and even government, nobody's ever seen anything like Rashida Talib and Ilan Omar, who openly campaign against Israel. Nobody's ever seen this before. When asked recently about rising anti-Semitic hate, Joe Biden's own press secretary had nothing to say about the rabid mobs in the street, and they're shouting, kill the Jews, kill the Jews. And she had nothing to say. In fact, she stuck up for the other side. She started talking about the other side. You all saw it. Nobody could believe it. Then she came back later. She said, oh, I misunderstood the question. As president, I will absolutely protect our Jewish citizens from these maniacs, lunatics, radical left thugs. Threats or crimes of violence against Jews will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Right now, they go after Republicans, including me. They go after lots of people. They go after Catholics. I don't know what it is with the Catholics, but they're really after the Catholics, and they're after people wanting to make their school district better. This is a strange thing that's happening in our country. While in office, I took the strongest action of any president in history to combat the vile scourge of anti-Semitism. You know that. I signed a landmark executive order fighting anti-Semitic hate on college campuses and affirming that discrimination against Jewish students will be aggressively punished as a violation of civil rights. And that — we didn't have that, if you can believe it. When I get back into office, I will put every single university and college president on notice. The American taxpayer will not subsidize the creation of terrorist sympathizers on American soil. Colleges and universities will purge the anti-Semitism and pro-terrorism. Ter uh, what, what you're doing, the terrorism, this pro-terrorism is so out of control, nobody's ever seen or they will lose their accreditation and every last penny of federal student loans. It will not be paid to them, probably shouldn't be paid to them anyway. Never forget the same radicals tearing down posters of Israeli hostages. Can you imagine at our university? Ripping them right off the wall. I couldn't believe it. Are the ones tearing down statues of our American heroes, defunding our police, destroying our justice system? and demolishing our borders. These are the same people that you have. Same people, not good people for us. The United States and Israel represent the pinnacle of Western civilization, which is exactly what these people want to destroy. They want to destroy it. This is why those who chant death to Israel also chant always death to America. Do you ever notice? They always put them together. And that's why American patriots and supporters of Israel, and you have tremendous support in this country, I can tell you that, must stick together. Come hell or high water, you have to stick together. We must have strong borders, strong military, strong families, strong cultures, and above all, we must have a strong American president. That's where it starts. You don't have a strong president. The rest is just words. It's only words. It's only words. You never had any of these problems. For four years, you didn't have any of these problems. Think of it. You wouldn't have Ukraine. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have Israel being attacked. You wouldn't have inflation. You wouldn't have anything. You'd have, you'd have gasoline selling at $1.87. With your vote, I will defeat the jihadists, the terrorists, the communists, the Marxists, the fascists, and the anti-Semitic radical left lunatics. And we have plenty of them. We have a lot more. They're just pouring into our country. You know, the same people that attacked Israel are coming into our country. And there are a lot of them that are young, strong men. And they're coming in. They're 21 and 22 and 23 and 24 years old. And they're strong. And I watched some of the fake news media saying, oh, so many strong men. Oh, that's wonderful. There's a reason. And you know where they're coming in from also? 
slightly different all over the Middle East, but where they're coming in from? A lot coming in from China. What's that all about? We have a lot of young, strong men coming in from China. I wonder what that's all about. I will defend our friend and ally, the State of Israel, like nobody has ever defended it before. I will rescue the American economy. I will restore America's borders, which are a disaster. I will stand up for American sovereignty, and I will save American freedom starting on November 5th, 2024. Get out and vote. And I just want to say, and I say it so strongly, this is the most important election in the history of our country. I used to say that on 2016. This is the most important election, and I meant it fully. But now I can tell you, you know, we made the border so strong, I couldn't even talk about it in 2020. Sir, don't talk about the borders. In 2016, it was all about the borders, and we did an unbelievable job. So when we came back to 2020, I couldn't even talk about them. People would say, sir, nobody cares about the borders. You know why? Because we had strong borders. Now we have the weakest borders we've ever had. I'll do it again, and we'll do it fast, and we're going to make it strong. But what we have to do is we have to get out and vote. This is the most important election in the history of our country, because if we don't win this election, I really believe you're not going to have Israel anymore, and you're not going to have the United States of America anymore. Get out and vote. 2024 is the most important election in the history of our country. Thank you. I love you. Make America great again. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much.